Hey guys, how's it going? In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to listen for key presses in Angular. So I have a um, new project here that I've just created with Angular CLI. And I'm going to go to appcomponent.html. I'm going to delete this content here. And I want to just create an input. For the first example, I'm going to create an input uh, of, of type text. And I want to, um, and I want to listen to the key press, the key press event. And I want to um, run a method called on key press and pass in the event object. And we can actually um, go to the component class and uh, create the on key press method that takes in the event object. And we can console log this event so that we can see um, what is in this event object. So let's save this and type in ng-serve. Okay, so once the live development server is up and running, we can go to uh, localhost 4200. And we have our app here. I'm going to inspect and get the console up. And I'm gonna type in hello world. And there we go. So we have a ton of key press events here, a ton of them, right? So um, keyboard event, key H, E L L O, and we have all of the keys that I just typed in here. So let's see what's in these keyboard events. So we have the key code here. So key H, uh, key H here as well. Uh, and we have all of these fields here in this event object for something more specific. So so let's say we want to listen for a specific key press. For example, let's say we want to listen for the enter key press on this input. Then what we can do is we can do um, key press dot enter. Save this and we can type in hello and now press enter. That won't work because this has to be key down, not key press, but key down dot enter. Save that and let's say if I do hello and press enter. Now we have the keyboard event uh, and we get the key enter and the code enter and all of these things. Uh, one interesting field in this keyboard event is the target field, which has the target input element, which is this element here, right? So if we expand this, we have all of the fields that are part of this DOM element here. And we have the value down here. So we have this value, hello. So we can put in hello world here, press enter, get the new keyboard event, go to target and go to value and it will have the contents of the input box. There we go, hello world. And we can use this to basically pass this data, pass just that data into the method. So we can do event.target.value, save that. And if I now type in hello world, Hopefully it should print to the console. There we go. So when we press enter, this now prints to the console and we can actually create um, a little example here where we have a heading with what's your name and we can say on name submitted. Uh, save this and we can rename this method to on name submitted. Uh, change this event to name of type string and we can now um, console log this name. Save that, and here we go. We can now type in uh, Bob, and there we go. We now have that showing in the console. We uh, we can make this a bit more advanced by creating a property called name in the component class, and setting that name uh, to the name that's passed in. And we can then in the template create a paragraph tag and use string interpolation to um, show this value. So what's your name? Uh, Andy. And there we go. We get we get this value here. And we can even uh, just do hi Andy as well. That will work. Or hi name and type in Andy and that will work. Uh, and we can also make this a bit more advanced by only showing this when the name has a value. So ng if name, and 
now it's not showing until I type in a name, Bob. Hi, Bob. There we go. So that was a really basic example uh, of listening for a key press. Now I want to um, create an example of a music player box, which will listen for uh, the space key down, the key down dot space, uh, and it will toggle the music playing state. So I'm going to, I'm going to delete this code here and I'm going to create a div with a class of music box. Uh, save that, go to um, the CSS and I'm going to do dot music box, add some styles here, so width 300 pixels, height 300 pixels, uh, border 2 pixels, solid green, save that and go back to our app and we have this now, so we have this box here and in the app component I'm going to delete this code here and, and create a um, create a property called is playing of type boolean and set set a default value of false and I want to then create a method called toggle which will toggle the playing state this dot is playing is equal to not this dot is playing there we go And in the template, I'm going to um, create an event listener for key down dot space. And on key down dot space, it will run the on, no, no, the toggle, the toggle method. So save that and go back to our app. Uh, oh yeah, uh, actually here we can use string interpolation to show the property. So is playing, save that and there you go. So we now have a music box which is showing the uh, property is playing. And um, hopefully if we press space now, it will toggle. So press space and nothing happens. And that's because we aren't focused on this div. In Angular, whenever we bind to an element, that element has to be in focus for that event to fire. So um, right now, the user can't focus on this div. It's not possible. There is a trick that we can use um, by using tab index is equal to zero so that the user can focus this element. So if I uh, click on this, uh, we will now get a blue outline which shows that it is in focus. And now if we press space, it's working. It is actually toggling this value, which is great. But the problem is, is that when this is out of focus, it won't work. And this is an issue in this example because it's not user friendly. Because when you're in a music player app, you want to be able to press space and for it to um, to pause the song you're playing. So if we um, now remove this because we don't need it anymore, I'm going to show you a way to to bind to window events. So um, we can save this now and we can go to the component class and we can use use a decorator called host listener, which will listen to events on the host component, but we can actually um, listen to window events here. So if I uh, type in window and then colon and then key down dot space, key down dot space, and then we need to put a name for this, so I'll call it space event. And then we can do um, toggle. There we go. So that should now work if we go back to our app and we are now not focused on this and we press space, it now toggles it. Great, so now we've got that working. So using host listener in the component class, you are able to bind to window events, which is great because it now means um, if they press space anywhere in the window, if they press space while focused on any element in the window, it will now toggle the uh, playing state of the music, which is great. Let's try another example. And um, this example, I'm going to be using host listener, but not with a specific key. So if I remove this and I um, put in another uh, parameter here, which is the args array, and I'm going to type in uh, the event object, the dollar sign event object. Um, and we now need the event in here. I'll type any. 
and we can now create a property uh, called um, key pressed, which is going to be a string. And we can delete all of this code here and just have that. And whenever a key is pressed, we can then get the actually we can change this from key down to key pressed because um, we can use that. And what we can do is we can do uh, this dot key press key pressed is equal to event dot target dot actually it's not target is it it's event dot key dot key yeah event dot key so if we go back to the um, HTML we can now use um, string interpolation to show the key press so if we save this now key pressed okay if we save this now and we uh, press a key like a b c d e f g so if we can now press any key and it will show up in the app so there you go that's pretty interesting this shows you how to how to use the event object um, while using host listener in the class component and we can also create another example where we have a counter so i'm going to delete this property and i'm going to create a a property called counter which will be of type number which will be um, set to zero by default and i'm going to do um oh yeah so here i want to just console log this um event object because i want to um see what the key code for the up and down arrows are so if i save this go back to our app here and if i press the up arrow we're not getting anything and that's because we don't have this right so if we can delete this content here because that's causing an error uh, okay and now if we press the up arrow why is that Okay, let's try key down. There we go. Okay, cool. So with key down, we are now getting um, the keyboard event for the up and down arrows. If I do down now, we now have up and down. And we want to get the, um, the code for these, the key code here. So 38. So if event dot key code is equal equal to 38 else if events.key code is equal to and then we can look at the down down for this it's 40 right so so key press so the down Okay, so here we can actually do this. So we can do this dot counter, counter plus plus, and this dot counter minus minus. Incrementing and decrementing the counter. So just save that. And in the template, we can, we can type in counter and go to our app. When you press the up arrow, it increases in value, and if you press the down arrow, it will decrease in value. Okay, so I've gone through a few examples here, and now you know how to listen for key presses in Angular. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video, and thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.